This animation is intended to demonstrate how a typical underground longwall mine may be developed. The mine depicted uses the retreat longwall mining method and is intended to be schematic only. The design of the mine has been simplified with clarity, and the design and features present are by no means indicative of all longwall operations. Longwall mining is a method used to extract coal from seams where surface mining is not viable. In this example, the shallow dip in coal seam shown is to be extracted using longwall mining techniques. The seam is 4 metres thick and is overlain by around 80 to 100 metres of overburden. The thickness of the seam is constant over the coal deposit. As a guide, the proposed development of the mine is shown overlying the seam. As can be seen, the majority of the development is kept within the seam to minimise costs. The first step in the development of a longwall mine is to provide access from the surface to the coal seam below. This can be achieved in several ways. However, in this case, a decline is used. On the surface, a portal is driven down at around 10 degrees into the ground. This forms the start of the decline. The decline consists of two roads, one for the conveyor that will transport coal out of the mine, and the other for general access and fresh air intake. The decline continues from the portal down into the coal seam. The coal conveyor will be installed only after the conveyor drive is no longer needed for development access. Once a decline has been finished, the development of the main headings can commence. The main headings are shown in green. The main headings near the portal consist of six roads, 35 metres apart and 5 metres wide by 3.5 metres tall. These roads are joined by crosscuts every 75 metres or so. This pattern leaves behind a series of pillars that are used to support the roof in the roads. The main headings serve as the major transport routes for workers, equipment, coal and ventilation throughout the mine. Further from the portal, where traffic will be less, the number of roads in the main headings may reduce. The ventilation shaft, which is shown in blue, will be sunk early in the mine's development. The shaft serves as an exit route for exhaust air out of the mine. The main headings will not be completely developed at the start of the mine life, but instead will be developed only as far as is needed as to provide access to the areas that are currently being mined. The areas that have been mined out are shown in mottled white. In longwall mining, the coal is mined in longwall panels. The longwall panels shown here are 300 metres wide by 2 kilometres long by 3.5 metres tall. In this example, the height of the longwall panel is the full height of the seam being mined. However, there are other factors such as coal quality at different levels in the seam and the size of mining equipment may also influence the height selected. The length and width of the longwall panel may be restricted by stability of the ground in the region, by severe faulting, or by the ability of the roof to cave. From a recovery and productivity aspect, the panel should be as wide and as long as possible. The way the coal in these longwall panels is mined is covered in another animation. However, at this stage, it is important to realise that the shearer equipment used to extract the coal from the longwall panel will move from the rear to the front of the panel, taking slices off the 300 metre working face as it proceeds. The working face is the name given to the side of the longwall panel that is currently being mined. As this example uses retreat mining, Access must be obtained to the rear of the longwall panel prior to mining. This is achieved via the construction of gate roads either side of the panel. The gate roads consist of two drifts, running the length of the longwall panel, connected by cut-throughs. Again, this leaves pillars of coal, called chain pillars, to support these openings. The gate road next to the previously mined longwall panel is called the tailgate, while the other is called the main gate. The tailgate of the current panel was the main gate of the previous. At the start of the block of longwall panels, both gate roads have to be developed. However, as in this case, the previous longwall panel has already been developed and only the main gate must be driven. At the rear of the longwall panel, a starter drift is also excavated. The starter drift defines the working face and provides a space for the shear and other equipment to be installed. At the other end of the panel, a barrier pillar is left behind. This pillar will not be extracted and serves to support the main headings. The pillar protects the main headings from the high stresses associated with the caving of overlying rock that occurs when the longwall panel is being mined. It is desirable for development to be around two or three longwall panels ahead of the panel currently being mined, although this may be difficult to achieve in reality. This is done for several reasons. 1. Production is not slowed by development. 2. Methane in the longwall panels is allowed to diffuse out before mining begins. And 3 so that as soon as one longwall panel has finished being mined, the equipment can be moved to the next without being delayed.
If development occurs too far ahead of mining, however, there will be increased costs associated with the maintenance of the gate road openings.